morning. Um, thank you very much for inviting us all to speak. I'm Maria Mori, I'm the Quality Manager for Facilities Management and Education. I brought along my colleagues Nikki Joyner and Callum Gendry. Now, unlike the Eurovision Song Contest, we're not going to sing, although you've given us microphones, but perhaps in the words of, I think it's One Direction, uh, the story of our life. Um, <laughs> holiday cooking, holiday camp, our take on what we do for our school children during down times. East Renfrewshire is a small authority. We're, so we sit in the south side of Glasgow. We only have 21 primary schools and seven high schools. Throughout that estate, we've got 16,000 children. So that's eight and eight. However, we actually only have 10% of free school lunches. Um, one of the things that East Ren is renowned for is the fact that they like to be the best and highest attainers in everything they do. And about 10 years ago, our um, then um, director, John Wilson, discovered that a young man had been caught on the main street in Barhead, which is one half of our authority, stealing a sandwich. And he was horrified. So when the boy was actually um, chatted to afterwards, it turned out that um, he had done that because at school normally got breakfast and at school he normally got lunch. So the director had a long think about this and decided maybe it would be a good idea to actually start a holiday camp which was surrounded and around the food orientation. It wasn't to be like school dinners where they all came in and queued up and had like the, the sort of buzz and the, 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 the um, usual frenetic situation that we experience in our authority. Um, it had to have some purpose. So to that end, um, holiday camp was started. And the aim of the programme which we now have achieved, and my colleagues are going to talk you through about the programme and what we actually deliver during the programme, is to nurture the children in our authority. And we're very proud of the hard work that we've put in and the level and stage that we've now got to within the authority. So I'm going to hand over to Nikki, and I think she's got a microphone. Do you want this one? how our programme has evolved over the last 10 years. Um, when we first started, uh, it was myself and Lorraine and the catering service that were tasked and challenged with delivering a lunch, nutritious lunch to the children um, within East Renfrewshire. And the first year we did it, there was, we'd had a two hour session in the morning, which incorporated lunch, and then we took more children in the afternoon, which was an additional two hour session. And it was very quick. <coughs> It was just a case of we were focusing on ensuring the children got their lunch and quickly after the first year, after reviewing it, it became apparent that this really wasn't what we were looking for. Um, it wasn't giving a, an all-round approach. So year two uh, in Barhead, we ran the programme for 200 children, no, 100 children, um, and this programme was four hours. So not only was it about the lunch, we then decided to have activities for the children uh, to sort of make it a, a fuller day for them. But I also meant the lunch was not just about getting food down and eating it. We sat with the children, we had an adult at the table, we set the, uh, the table with cutlery because we found that not only were the children not getting nutritious lunch, they weren't experiencing family life. So it was about teaching them how to use cutlery, it was about talking about food that they'd chosen for their lunch and maybe a peer at the table would pick something that they'd never tried before so they could either go up and try it themselves and I don't like that, oh I do like that, so they'd pick it next time. So it was about educating the children about the food um, and also the adult at the table would talk about how the dishes were made. So it, it, it was not just about feeding the boys and girls, it was about a whole round approach towards food. Some children are actually scared of trying new foods and uh, we found it really, really interesting that if we could talk them and encourage them and coax them, that uh, they would try these different foods. So that was hugely successful in year two. Year three, 
We thought, well, we've done it in one school, less open in another camp in another site authority. So we ended up 200 children um, and <coughs> very, very successful. And what we also did is every child who's entitled to a free school meal was written to offering this facility for the holiday camps. Um, and as a result of that, um, when they were written to, if the camp wasn't full, we then opened the camp up to other boys and girls within the authority and they could pay. So it helped wash the face slightly of the camp and it gave us a bit more funding. As a result of this, um, we ha then had the beginnings of a very successful camp. However, in 2008, we moved into education. Facilities management sat in its own for that. And when we moved into education, the conclusion came to that Carlin's team was running a, a craft camp and sports camp. We had active schools running a sports camp. And what the, the decision made was join the camps together. So they were then getting good nutritious lunch, information about food, health and activity, crafts, teaching life skills, whole variety of activity. And then we had a really solid camp. Um, and that ran and um, has been running for the last six years. The camp, oh, can we've gone too fast. <laughs> the camps we run uh, just now and have been running for the last six years are in two schools. We run them for uh, four weeks during the summer. The first week of summer holidays never works for some reason. I think the boys and girls have been in school for so long, they're like, get me away from here. You don't want to be here anymore. It doesn't work the first, and it doesn't work the last week either because I think they're like, oh, I want to have some time to play in the last week. So we came to the conclusion four weeks works a treat. Um, the spring, Easter, for two weeks is a really runs well, and one week October. Christmas doesn't work either. We tried that. It was hard work, <laughs> persuading my staff to work, Carolyn's team to work, and uh, the boys and girls really want to just go and play with the new toys and uh, sort of experience Christmas. So um, as a result of that, these are the conclusion. These uh, seven weeks, we deliver a full service um, five days a week, and we have dedicated staff, which is, I'm really proud of because when we first started the camp, I had to twist my staff's arm and say, please, please, please work for me during the summer. Because again, they like the seven week summer holidays. Um, but now I have teams of staff in the two sides who actually <coughs> take their annual leave around about the camp, and they, they know the children, they're local to the children. They have a sort of vested interest in the camp and they really join in and if sometimes I'll be looking for them and I find out they're on the stage doing a show with Carlin's team and I'm like, all right, should you not be cleaning the kitchen? We'll get to that later. So they're really, really good. It's an all-rounded approach that I'm really, it's, it's well done. Um, so what we offer, as Lorraine said, we didn't want to go down the line of a school meal because we wanted to teach them different things, cutlery, using, um, communicate and talk. So, this is one of the camps here, this is uh, one of the boy, and we have a buffet lunch um, two days a week. So it's pasta, salads, we try and sneak in different things that they might not, you know, exotic fruits or different pasta salads they might not have tried to try and broaden the children's palates. Um, Tuesday we do build, Tuesday and Thursday, yeah, we do build your own sandwich. Um, so we're trying to, um, what we're trying to do is say, look, here's the components, take it on a plate, take it back to the table, you could make this at home. So we're trying to teach them different things while they get a lunch. And believe me, some of the combinations we get in sandwiches are unbelievable. <laughs> and then Friday's our special day, and they get a wee treat. Caramel flan goes down really, really well with the boys and girls. That's their treat on a Friday. Um, but we'll have like, maybe a traditional meal. It could be steak pie, potatoes and veg, or it could be an uh, Italian theme. So we'd have pasta, bolognese, or lasagna. And uh, it's good fun, and the children really enjoy it. And one thing I've noticed, and Lorraine's noticed, over the last 10 years, the children that come to the camp are now eating better in school. Much, much better, and we find that quite exciting. And um, as a result of how successful this has gone, we've taken part of this model and put it into schools. So our tables are now all set with cutlery in every single dining hall in the school, and my staff serve the children, and they have their uh, crudities in the middle of the table and their bread. Um, so we've tried to take some elements of this to teach all the children in the state how to use cutlery and we're quite pleased with how successful it has, particularly the wee ones, primary ones, twos and threes, find dining halls very frenetic, um, but 
we've actually, so the camp has actually benefited the whole estate. So from that point, the hard part is the cost. This is one of my, uh, my team and I've been talking about Carolyn. Carolyn's from the education side. Um, she's the health and wellbeing development officer. The picture, the gentleman's picture is Barry, who's, he leads the third element of our collaborative approach. <coughs> our work husband. <laughs> work, <laughs> work husband. Uh, he's an active schools coordinator. And we sit after every camp and talk through how we can improve the camp, what we can do, what the children would like better. And I think even next time we're talking about putting the main meal on the middle of the table one day and letting the children have a family dinner. Um, so it's, it's just teaching different life skills to the children. So the food cost, which is probably what you're interested in, because that's what I'm interested in. <laughs> uh, it's £3.15 we charge as the cost in education for a meal. Okay, That covers all the staffing, foods, everything associated with kitchen costs. Um, and then the, the cost for the support services, um, Carla's team activities is £8.47. So when you look at that cost for the, the, the programme per child, we're actually charging the training <coughs> child £63 for five days. So we make a wee bit of money off them, which helps support the camp. But it's not a massive cost to us. We do have small preschool meals. That's the, the, the <coughs> easy bit for us. If we were in an authority that had 80% preschool meals, it would be harder to deliver. Um, but in our authority, because we have so few school meals, that these children, these vulnerable children, are, are very important to us because they are so pocketed all over the authority and we, we feel we need to look after them. And it's really, really <coughs> important that we, they don't feel different from the rest of the boys and girls in the state. So our programme um, is fully supported by education. Um, our director is very keen to keep it running as long as we can um, and Carolyn, Barry, myself and our teams are very very involved in the programme and want to keep the standards the way we've set them up. So from this point I'm going to let hand over to Carolyn because she looks at it from a health and well-being point of view as in the taking care of the boys and girls. So I'll hand over to yourself Carolyn. <coughs> East Renfrewshire is an interesting authority. Uh, part of it's very, very affluent and part of it's very poor. And the poor part, 90% of the children from the poor part who are in terms of school meals come to our camp. And in the more affluent part, 50% pay for the place. So that's, it's actually quite a different authority, isn't it, for, in that respect. My name's Carolyn McKendry and I'm a Health and Wellbeing Development Officer with East Renfrewshire Council education department I have been for 15 years. So I take a collaborative and holistic approach to everything I do, as I do in health and wellbeing. For the last seven years, I've been working alongside Nikki and Lorraine and my work husband, as you can see there, Barry, <coughs> running the holiday camp. And Barry and I are, I guess, like the head, the head teachers of, of a school. So what we wanted very much to do was to run the holiday camp like a school. Um, and the kids will say it's like school, only funner. <laughs> because we don't we we don't do the reading and the and the writing and, and, and all of that. But what we do, I was interesting when Rachel said at the beginning, addressing holiday hunger isn't just about food. It's absolutely not. I think the children that come to our camp are hungry for caring, for love, for nurturing, for hanging about with their peers, for having a safe place to go and to be fed and to be physically active as well. Now the Scottish Government have a, thank you, have a document called Getting It Right for Every Child. And those of you that live in Scotland will know it's called Gerfec. And this is, this is how we, this is the document that we use to make sure we're getting it. We know we're getting it right. We, we could pack our camp out probably three times over. We have parents coming to our show on a Friday who haven't set foot in school since they left. They don't come to parents' night. They don't trust East Renfrewshire Council, and yet they show up on a Friday to watch their kids and Nikki um, and Lorraine's canteen staff showing off all of the new skills on a Friday. So we know anecdotally, and we know by the faces that we see that we're getting it right, but we have used this document. We've used the GIFEC document just to check. So this is our wellbeing wheel. 
Safe, healthy, achieving, nurtured, active, respected, responsible and included. <coughs> and if we want to make sure we're getting it right, we look at all of these parts of the wellbeing pool. So we just sat down and said, right, how do we know we're keeping the children safe? Well, we keep the children safe because many of our children, um, or many of our vulnerable children and families, have social workers. So social workers have my direct line, and they'll phone me and say, this child, this, this family are going through a really difficult time at the moment. The child really needs to be at the camp. We have about 30% of the children that come to our camp have additional support needs. And I mean additional support needs in its broadest sense. Some of them have physical disabilities. Some of them have their emotional difficulties. A lot of them have behavioural difficulties because of the stuff you were saying, Rachel, about their life chances, about the real difficulties that we face. So 30% of the children that come to our camps absolutely need to be there. And my phone's red hot for the two or three weeks leading up to the camp saying so and so needs to be here, so and so needs to be here. And they're there because it's a place of safety. They have positive adult role models, they get to hang around with their peers, they also get to practice the relationships because there are children from all of the schools in the authority all coming together, having to get on with one another. So keeping them safe is actually quite an easy thing. Keeping them healthy, obviously we feed them, they get a great nutritious meal, we keep them physically active as well. How do we get them to achieve? They have opportunities to improve their skills. So our physical activity is, some of it's sports, some of it's about physical activity. We give them the opportunity to do lots of things that they like. Well, we have older children from the secondary school coming in to volunteer and to mentor. And they get dynamic youth awards, they get solitary awards, I write references for them for the university applications, all of that. So, and on a Friday, they all show off their skills as well. How do we nurture them? Well, you, you can guess. There's a real move in some schools that you're not allowed to hold the kids' hands, you're not allowed to hug them, or you're not allowed to get them to sit on your knee. We do, we do all of that. We give the kids whatever we need, whatever they need. The physical active way they're like it or not every single day. <laughs> if it's nice, we're outside playing. If it's raining, we're outside playing because once they're wet, they're wet, and they really, really, really enjoy it. From a respective point of view, we follow what they do in schools. We use restorative approaches and solution focused approaches. So from a respect point of view, you're really teaching the children to respect one another, to manage their own feelings and to work out their own difficulties. From a responsible point of view, the same thing. From an included point of view, we are a fully inclusive authority, so every child that wants to come to our camp can come. If they have a physical disability, if they have a mental difficulty, and I make sure the staff can contribute to that. Okay, next steps, future funding. Well, there's lots and lots of difficulties. The, educa the education department, well, they mainstream fund this camp and they've continued to do that. Parental involvement is a massive part of our camp. I, my vision is that the schools that we run these um, holiday camps in will become community hubs, will become a one-stop shop because our parents are confident to come through my door. They're not as confident to go to social work. They're not as confident to go to the health centre. So what I want is for those staff to come to me so that when the parents come through the door, they can see their social worker, they can see their housing officer. And we're getting there, aren't we? Yeah. We're definitely getting there with that. More formal support from the council departments and services, we are there, and evaluation with our partners. We've done lots of evaluation with the kids and with the parents, but next step is evaluation with our partners. I'm sorry, I've probably gone on. I could talk all day. Please come and see if you've got any questions. I could tell you loads more. Thank you, Richard.